Last week, Echo Track was in China, taking a close look at how this country, which is undergoing rapid industrialization, is trying to balance economic growth and environmental responsibility. This week, we are moving west with the Mercedes-Benz EFSA wall drive, crossing the border from China to Kazakhstan and Almaty. Hi, I'm Anita Anthony, and you're watching Echo Track. Almaty or Alma Ata, as the city was known until it gave up being the capital of Kazakhstan to Astana, historically has always been the threshold between Orient and Occident. The Central Asian country culturally and politically connects the West with the East. While China is struggling to protect its environment, Kazakhstan, a country made wealthy due to its vast oil reserves, is investing in protecting its environment. Kazakhstan has committed to significantly reducing greenhouse gases and since 1999 the Republic of Kazakhstan has been a party to the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. The Washington State University teamed up with some Kazakh students to redesign a botanical garden in Almaty. This is part of a greater initiative by the university to develop sustainable agriculture in southern Kazakhstan. The agriculture project includes electricity development using renewable energy systems, water and hydro energy development, water purification, trip irrigation for an increasingly diverse variety of crops, and refrigeration processing and storage systems for milk and crops. All that is being coupled with enterprise development in order to help farmers and entrepreneurs develop economically sustainable businesses. Christian met the director of the program, David Bidoshvili. We work towards um, improvement of uh, rangeland management, pasture management, and what we are doing at the moment, we are promoting uh, renewable, use of renewable energy sources in agriculture. This uh, vast areas they have no access to electricity and very low access to water and the uh, technologies that we propose they provide them with electricity and they provide them with water and at the same time they they uh, establish opportunities for development of entrepreneurship and for improving livelihoods eventually. Khan Shatur, the world's largest tent, is now an iconic landmark of Kazakhstan's new capital, Astana. Designed by Norman Foster, the 150 meter tall structure has a lot of impressive green features from copious natural daylighting to interior gardens and living systems. Although the outside temperature varies from minus 35 degrees to plus 35 degrees Celsius, the interior maintains a moderate 15 to 30 degrees. To prevent condensation in the winter, three translucent layers of a special fabric called EFTE act to channel warm air. In the summer, cooler air displaces the hot air vented from the top. Good example how sustainable technology results in conserving energy. Mercedes-Benz EFSA World Drive is now well on the way home to Stuttgart. After almost 110 days on the road around the world, Christian has learned almost everything to know about the EFSA cars. So let's have a closer look at this technology that has the potential to be a tangible solution for day-to-day -day emission-free mobility. Here's the story. We are at the Mercedes-Benz dealership in Nizhny Novgorod, Russia. And from today, it's only 15 more days to go for the Mercedes-Benz F-Cell World Drive. It's a good opportunity to show you again how this technology works, where and how many hydrogen gas stations already exist, and where the hydrogen can be obtained from. Our World Drive technicians were very friendly and removed the undercarriage shields, so I can show you the components of this car. The B-Class F-Cell has three hydrogen tanks with a capacity of 3.7 kilograms. These tanks can withstand even the worst impact and will not explode even in case of fire. From here the hydrogen goes to the heart of the propulsion system, the fuel cell stack. In this stack the hydrogen reacts with oxygen from the air. This creates electric current which powers an electro engine. At the end of it all there's an exhaust pipe just like in any other car. But there's a difference, out of this comes only water. Right under the trunk is a powerful battery which provides additional power for acceleration. But it does not need to be recharged from a socket. It automatically occurs every time you take a foot off the gas. Where the motor normally is located, in the F-cell are additional system components. Although the F-cell engine needs a little more room than a conventional motor, the passenger has the same space and comfort. 
We are continuously developing the fuel cell powertrain so that with increased efficiency and similar safety, the weight and the space demand will be decreasing in future. This was EchoTrack. See you next week.